What if I just ran the Sawzall just cause? Hey everyone, this is Brendan with McKellar Construction. We're here in East Grand Rapids getting rained on, but it's not gonna stop us from having a little fun. I'm here with Steve Cornwell with Zeeland Lumber, and Steve is our window rep over at Zeeland Lumber. I like to call it a window specialist. I specialize in windows and exterior doors. Whenever there's a need, whether it's a new home, renovation, a homeowner has a small project, I get involved to make sure that the right window or door goes in the right application. We're just trying to be gentle is all. It's the first one, so. I don't think we have any room. Uh... All right, hold on, Cole. Um, but the reason that we're here is because Stephen from Fine uh, Carpentry and Cabinets called us in. What Stephen does is, actually, why don't you tell us what you do? I do mostly trim work and just the, the finished details for the carpentry aspect of the project. So Stephen's done a lot of work on this home and uh, what I like about his work and working with him is that he's got a lot of attention to detail. Um, Everything's super clean, everything's super organized. And um, Steven pulled us in because with 14, 15 windows, it can get pretty intense. There's, uh, you know, up here, we have to go with the second story up here. So um, we have Hunter, Cole, and myself helping Steven out, getting these windows in. And uh, I think it's turning out fantastic. What do you think? I'm very pleased. Good. You did great work. So. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> appreciate it. Okay. Let's go top, top down. Oh. Lighter than a pack of bread, Hunter. East Grand Rapids here, older home. We're trying to follow some of the old architecture and bring it back with new technology that lasts as long or longer than the existing windows. But we thought that the lines of this uh, Elevate Marvin Elevate window really matched what was here already and gave us some of the grill patterns we were looking for. Going up here or all, all the, way the way up? All the way up, 62 and a half. So we got two inches, we only need one. We'll have uh, 73 and an eighth, so we'll have, you know, inch and some change. So yeah, good news. What we have here is this is a piece of cedar siding that you get stock in many places. What people usually don't do is put this extra filler right here that keeps this from collapsing. And that's amazing. Uh, amazing craftsmanship that I love to see. The reason I like working with Steve is because he has a slew of different brands and products that he can choose from. And he has a lot of knowledge about building science in general. What I'd want to go is two inches because we, Steve, tell me what you think. We have an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, inch and a half flange. Well, we're not. So I would, I was talking to Steven earlier, I'd cut this right off and put a one by there. Yeah, I think so, and I'll just wrap it the back of the, the paper. So, so I would cut that three inch piece straight on straight down, down, and then it's out of the way. That's just me personally. Well, I like you personally, that thought. <laughs> that makes my life a little easier. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. No, I, I think that's the right choice. It's not the... Uh, yeah, yeah. If it was this much, different choice. Yeah, 62 and a half. So the two kinds of uh, tape that we have um, that the instruction manual says to use is the flex wrap or the straight flash. Yep. For, Correct. for the panning. Yep. So, so that's what we're using today. Off, so what we're going to do here is bring this about six inches up on this side, stretch it across, and pull it up six inches on that side. Right on that X right there. How about? That looks about five and a half inches. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you judging my eyeball? No. My one good eyeball? So this is flex tape. 
You, you see it's all textured like this. It's gonna stick really well. I usually pull one off so you don't have everything sticking. This is life here. A little sticky, a little rough, but. This is the kind of stuff that oh, sometimes awesome. makes it makes it more time consuming than you want. Yes. I'm getting lucky here. Oh, you are. You got yours? Yeah, finally. That's good. Bingo. Okay, so what we do here is we go together. Hold it right here, and you got a center mark there approximately. So we lay that there. You got your plastic tool. I do have my plastic tool. And you're tool. gonna carry your side first across. Okay. And work right from the center and stick that right there. Awesome. Want this flat, flat, flat. And what we're doing here is we have the cedar shim, which is a ramp. So when this window leaks in 50, 60 years, the water actually has to go up and come up, which you'll never do. So this is the belt and suspenders. That's nice. <laughs> How are we feeling, Steve? Oh, I'm feeling good here. Good. Ramp that right down. Yes, sir. Now, how do we handle this this inside corner here? What so, do we do to so pull what this we're down? trying to do this the reason we use flex wrap is because on these outside corners we can actually flex this around and get a continuous waterproof barrier all the way around. So we'll start in the center here and start wrapping this down. And do you have a fastener? Yeah, Cole, you got a roofing nail on you. You want to just pound one here, right yep. in the middle? Perfect. And we'll just keep on wrapping this down like so. There's no race to waterproofing. Okay, so here, you've, we're gonna push that down and massage that around that corner. Okay. And that'll spread that open. That's where these little lines are. And it'll wrap right around so that it's a solid seal. Gosh. I wonder what the science behind that is to make I don't know. that it's a work. a beautiful thing though is what I see. We've kind of come a long way since duct tape. How does that look? Yeah, that is perfect. When you lay this window, you want all this as flat as possible mm -hmm. so it doesn't push the window out for the finished guy on the inside. But the prep you put into a window before you nail it in is the most important part. Everything after that's cosmetic. But the service you give in the install, you can make a bad window perform better and a great window not perform at all. Hopefully it won't leak in the next 10 or 15 years, but at 30, 40 years, it will leak. And what we're doing right now, as we pull this out and reflash it and protect it, that's what's really gonna help it at the 30, 40, 50 year yard mark. We don't want this window to sit on this ramp. So what we get is a composite shim here, and we can re-flatten this right on out. And so we'll put a couple of these, and then we'll set this window right on top. Next, we're ready for a window in here. We're ready for a window? We are so ready for this oh window. Oh my gosh. It's getting cold inside. <laughs> One more. I like that idea. Oh yeah. Yep. How you doing? You want to sit down for a sec? Okay. No, we're good. Want to go through the bushes? Right. Set it down for a sec. Oh, sorry. Gotta go my way a bunch, Cole. Needs to be lifted up. There's that half inch flange in the bottom. There we go. All right, how, you, how you doing, Hunter? A little more? How are we looking, Cole, side to side? We got a half inch either side? We should. That's good. Are you even side to side? Okay. Windows would be one of the top um, renovations that, you know, as far as return. I think the average is like 60 or 65% return on investment. Just renovating or updating your windows can save you money over the long course of the, the year. Um, and long term really for um, your home value. Um, you're essentially giving peace of mind to buyers when you've put in that time and money to renovate um, or to upgrade your windows. 
A lot of different manufacturers have different nail flanges we that have, and some are removable, some are uh, combined. And the nail flange doesn't necessarily hold the whole window up and down, but it holds it so when the house breathes, it doesn't flex it out. What we're gonna do right now is level this thing and make sure it's square, level, and plumb. And then we're gonna start setting the screws into these uh, fastening holes. I got 99% of weight. Right there it is. We're perfect now. My mom was taller. <laughs> yeah, mine too. She's a solid five foot. All right. I don't think she's going anywhere, huh? This rain. I'll tell you what, man. I'm trying not to wear a hood, but. Uh, protecting the jams, protecting the sill putting the correct caulking in the foam in. This is what really matters on making this window perform to its best. So what you're gonna do is try to make a square. We're gonna make four of them for each corner. Is a guide to run No, it, it's just proximate. We're yeah. just as long as it's somewhat close. And so this, we're gonna make a key for each corner. So what I do is make a square and then I cut another square out of that. And that gives you this little L that we can stick on each corner before we put the window tape on. So like half, half of yep. the square maybe? Yep, okay. and I'll show you why I like it about this size. Onto that window frame itself, this edge and this edge. Why is that? Because belt and suspenders, you don't ever want to rely on the nail fin that you're nailing into the house that could flex to actually seal. It should seal, belt suspenders, we don't want water to ever get in the house or air. So well, that's why I do this really nice adhesive tape to stick right to the frame beyond this nail flange and then to here and essentially nothing can get past that. We got the, the first drainage barrier, this is the second one. And then we're gonna, after we have these corners on, we'll put a verticals in. So what you're doing basically is taking out any possible variable of water coming That's in. correct, because we live in Michigan with a lot of rain. Uh, New Mexico, very little rain, you might not need to do this, you still should because of air infiltration. 90% of problems are outside elements coming inside and we're eliminating it that doing this. Okay, perfect. So we gotta do that on all four corners. All four right? corners. Is that how you, you do it? You got it, Hunter? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want this guy back, like don't it. you? <laughs> First time I've ever done this. <laughs> Today. <laughs> and so what I do is hold this up, say the height you want, and I actually hold it right to the edge of this window. That's a little trick I have. Because once you push it in there, it sucks it right in. And that's how I get this nice, just like that. We have this overlap adhered to here, adhered to here. And we'll cut this right here later. So he's working on the sides getting that. And some people ask, why don't we tape this? We leave this nail flange open. We have this underneath here, but why we do that is if there's ever condensation that can build up on the inside of the house or moisture from anything else, we don't want to get entrapped underneath this beautiful window where there's wood and it sucks it up in. We allow this for drainage. So if there's any inside water or condensation, it can still come out and come over this and come out into the, without touching any woodwork. So always leave this open. And I've been working with Steve for, for a while now. We've been working on installations together. Everybody at Zeeland Lumber has been great. And it's been awesome to work with Brendan. I've been in the industry for 27 years and I'm always looking for new young talent that loves what they do. They do it well. They represent our company and their company well as a client. I can't say enough about working with you. Oh, thanks Steve, I appreciate it. No hugs. <laughs> <laughs>